Do the Bengals have to go defense at 31? Hi again, everybody. I'm James Erpine of AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And I got to be honest with you. That's the narrative. That's been the narrative. Can, should they go defense? Do they need to go defense? Corner, corner, corner. Maybe defensive tackle. Oh my goodness, they fixed the offensive line, James. And yeah, the Bengals did add three starters to their offensive line. And I like Ted Karras. And I like Alex Kappa. And of course, who doesn't like Lyle Collins? At the same time, this idea that it's all hunky-dory in the trenches for the Bengals... Well, it's hogwash, as they say. It's a myth. It is not reality. It's somewhere in the land of Bengaldom that people have gone to to pretend that the Bengals aren't one play away from potentially Isaiah Prince playing right tackle, from uh, Deontay Smith starting at left guard, from Jackson Carmen starting at left guard. And maybe that works out well. Maybe that's the, the, the way... Uh, things go, the way they develop, the way, you, you know, the Bengals are hoping it goes, of course, it, is it works out well. But hope is one thing. A full-on plan is another thing. And the Bengals executed their free agency plan. And I don't necessarily think they're going to go big after, you know, J.C. Treader or anything like that. doesn't feel like they're in the market for one of those guys. But this idea that the offensive line is fixed and that offensive line shouldn't be considered at 31... Well, you're out of your damn mind if you think that. And that's with all due respect to the Bengals fans out there because I, I, it just means I disagree. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate your opinion, appreciate you chiming in on the channel. But have we not watched this offensive line for six years? Trash. Yeah, they got some veterans. All right. Well, I want young talent too. And so if Tyler Linderbaum falls to 31, yeah, with his 31 and an eighth inch arms. Yeah. Oh my God. Historically short arms. Oh my Tyler Linderbaum, man. I don't think the Bengals are going to like him. I did. He's a freak. He, he would be the, the best athlete potentially on the Bengals offensive line from the jump. Boom. Just like that. Oh, well, they already have a center, James. Yeah. They don't have a left guard and now they would a veteran left guard and a guy in Linderbaum who is much better, at least on paper. Then a guy like Jackson Carmen, don't believe me? My guy Marcus Mosher of uh, Locked On Cowboys, he's a really good Twitter follow, at Marcus underscore Mosher, put together a consensus board of all the mocks out there, of, or, or of all the draft boards, um, going into April. And I look, Tyler Linderbaum, oh, Tyler Linderbaum is 12th in the ranking. Wow, he's 12th in the ranking. If he falls to 31, are you serious? That That's where we're at? The Bengals are at a place now where, oh, they protect Joe Burrow. They got that covered. We need to worry about corner. Eli Apple can't be the cornerback. Well, okay, fine. Here's the first thing. Eli Apple has the confidence of this coaching staff. They brought back Eli Apple, tweets included, for a reason. And honestly, yeah, they could take an Andrew Booth if he's there. By the way, Andrew Booth is lower on the board. Um, I'm trying to see here. Yeah, he's 25th on that board, on that consensus board. So you'd say, oh, well, more likely to fall. Certainly, that's the case, and he could be there. And, I, and I'm not ruling out corner. I'm not saying they have to go offensive line. But this idea that they should rule out offensive line is asinine. <laughs> that's what it is. It's absolutely ridiculous because the Bengals' path to becoming this juggernaut where they're just good year in and year out, that is going to be on the shoulders in the right arm of Joe Burrow. And how do you do that? You protect him. And how do you protect him? By starting a pipeline of offensive linemen and getting younger offensive linemen in the pipeline on rookie deals. And they have a couple that they are, are confident could step up. But if a guy like Linderbaum falls, who, again, freakish athleticism, uh, really, really uh, sound from a, a technique standpoint, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about, you know, these draft offensive line gurus, and we'll have some of them on right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. They love them. And it's not just him, by the way. Zion Johnson is another guy out of Boston College. If he's there, like, he could literally be a plug-and-play left guard. He could give you another option that isn't Jackson Carmen, that isn't Deontay Smith, just in case. And so this idea that, oh, the Bengals, they, they have to take a corner. 
Or they have to take a defensive tackle. Heck, I'd even take a safety ahead of offensive line. Well, you are out of your damn mind if you feel that way. And look, I know I'm going to get some pushback for being this strong of a take. But it's like we've forgotten already. It's like we've forgotten what, what can happen if, oh, wait, well, Collins, if he misses time this year, well, then maybe Deontay Smith kicks out the right tackle. Oh, well, what if he was starting at left guard? Then who plays right tackle? Oh, you see what I'm saying? Now we're in a kerfuffle. Does that mean it's Isaiah Prince time? Do you, do you feel good about that or did you just make a face? That's the point. You want depth. Depth, 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 depth. And what happens if you drafted a Linderbaum or a Zion Johnson is they probably start. Linderbaum would start at center. Karras would start at left guard. You're basically drafting Linderbaum to stabilize the center position for potentially five seasons minimum and kicking Karras, who's on a very team-friendly deal over the next three years, to left guard, knowing, yeah, if something happens to Linderbaum, now we have a, a steady center behind him that we can move over. The versatility there is really nice with Karras. And if it's Zion Johnson, well, he might come in and beat the hell out of Jackson Carmen in the competition or beat out Deontay Smith in the competition. And if not, then that's great. That that means Carmen earned it or Smith earned it and you feel good about your backups and your depth and boom, there you go. That's the path. I'm not ruling out corner. If Linderbaum isn't there and Zion Johnson isn't there or maybe the Bengals just don't like one of those guys. And, and you know, there's other offensive linemen, uh, you know, Kenyon Green, um, out of Texas A&M, uh, you know, Kyer Elam, the, the cornerback, you know, maybe he's there and none of these other guys are there. I get it. I understand the path and I'm not against corner. So I don't mean to sound that way because it kind of does sound that way, huh? I'm not against that. I'm not against defensive line at all. What I am against is ruling out offensive line because the Bengals made a few additions in free agency. I said going into free agency, the Bengals needed to do two things to stabilize the offensive line. One, be aggressive in free agency and add proven bodies. Two, get it right in the draft with offensive line. And so this idea that they should rule out offensive line at 31, never going to get a stamp of approval by me. And by the way, the Bengals haven't ruled offensive line out at 31. I don't think they're going to rule offensive line out between now and the draft at 31 because, let's be honest, 30 players are going to go ahead of them. And there's a shot that the best player on their board is an offensive lineman. And if it's Tyler Linderbaum, if he's there at 31, good shot that he could be the BPA. Good shot that Zion Johnson could be the BPA. Good shot that Kenyon Green could be the BPA. Not just, oh man, they should take a corner because Eli Apple. Well, you know what else they should do? Sign another veteran. And I think they're going to. We'll see. Might not be a big splash even though there's still some big names out there. But I do think that they could add another veteran corner either right before the draft or right after. For more, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. I just, I know I ranted today, but it, it's it's ridiculous to me that it's suddenly like, oh yeah, the offensive line is fine. Shout out to Rivertown Inquiry, by the way. Look at that. Yeah. But, oh, they're fine. It's going to be okay. Look, they, they added the help. Don't even need to address it. That problem is fixed. Come on now. Come on now. That's not the case. And that's why, uh, you, you know, it could be fixed for 2022 for the most part. But if a great offensive lineman is standing, is sitting there at 31 and is the best player available, you take him. You don't rule him out because, oh, my God, Eli Apple is going to play corner. That's not, that's not good business. That's bad business. Like I said, hit that subscribe button for our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine signing off for now right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.